grand opening, grand closing. Welcome, my friends, my family, my fellow gamers. Your only friend is YouTube Streets, Porter Rock 77. And I'm back with another video. We got a couple of topics. Um, we're just going to fly through them. We're going to kick off with uh, a couple of fanboy nonsense on Twitter. Just talking about a few things. And then we're going to end it off with a discussion of Destin Langari. I guess he seems the light. But we're going to talk a little bit about that because I'm just absolutely confused We'll, we'll get there, right? We'll start off with this. So we'll start off with this one. Um, Twitter account extension. Um, this was formerly known as whatever her name is. Some people say she was catfishing. She was a true fangirl, whatever. But totally switched up the account. Made it into more of a like a publication style. Not publication style, but you know, something like Xbox centric and called the extension. Well, in this case, um, this account said... Breaking, I told you, as soon as Xbox ported a few exclusives to PS5, Sony starts doing the same thing. So this one, this is, this goes in line with everybody saying the industry changing, industry changing, which I'll touch on more about that weird, that weirdness that's going on. But anyway, um, this account used um, the recent announcement of Predator Hunting Grounds being ported or being made for Xbox Series XS and the PlayStation 5. And um, this account used... Uh, like a Wikipedia of who published the PlayStation 4 version in the Windows version, which was at the time Sony um, Interactive. So, combine the two pieces of information. Ha! PlayStation's making more games. Copy an Xbox. Hey, Phil was right. Importing games on PlayStation. Industry is changing. Wrong! Wrong! Like, and like um, Charlie Murphy and, um, you know, Dave Chappelle show. Wrong! You wrong! Because what happened, what happened was... The developer game, they're publishing rights to their own game. They are now publishing their own game, and they decided to add it to the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series S and X. This has nothing to do with PlayStation. Nothing. They own the game. All rights to it. So, they're the ones publishing. On Steam, Epic Game Store, whatever. Full control of their own title. Has nothing to do with PlayStation. So, wrong. Good try, though. Um, more in the world of Twitter. Um, let me zoom this in right here. Tin Dog, you know, he's out there. And we all know Tin Yo, listen. It's just funny how these two-year fanboys who's been around maybe for like a year or two is trying to clap back at him, you know, at Tim Dog. Given the fact that he's been doing this since like, hell, since like Facebook on the 360. You know what I'm saying? He's always been down, um, supporting Xbox. Um, you know, he actually talks to Phil and to the staff and all that stuff. He, he was a, a huge influencer to the brand. Um, but Chris Dring just came up with some comments in an article and in the yellow box right here, in the white box, I mean, says right here, um, and with Xbox putting some of the games on PS5, I understand the majority of them will be coming across at some point, assuming, you know, it progresses as Xbox believe it probably will. I think Xbox is in real trouble as hardware manufacturer. And that was the thing that came out of GDC for me because I always thought I've always been of the belief that it is the Game Pass delivery system. It's got a good UI. It's got a good controller. If you like Xbox games, it's probably the best way to play them, etc. I thought it would be fine, but then I didn't really factor in that some developers and publishers might just go, yeah, I don't, you know, is there any point? And that is when you can lose it, right? And, you know, Tim Dog just came out and says, what you don't want is for third party to say Xbox is PC, just like Xbox tells you, followed by releasing only on PS5 and PC. I unfortunately feel this report by Dring is not him being some demented Sony fanboy, but rather him saying what he is hearing. The last six months of sales for Xbox, especially in Europe, has definitely raised red flags in regards to Xbox hardware. Yet again, just another day in news. Now, how is that any relevance? Well, just like... So Chris Dring actually is at GDC, Game Developers Conference. He's talking to the developers. He's repeating what they're saying. But everybody's like, who said it? Who said it? Come on, you know they're not going to reveal names, right? It's, but it, but but when it came to talking shit about PlayStation 5, you, you didn't really care about the source then. But anyway, different conversation. But right here, from Shinobi, big Xbox Game Pass, wait, big, big Xbox Game Pass and Epic exclusive deals have dried up for indie devs, says Mega Crit. Slay the Spire and Will Hook Studios Darkest Dungeon. Microsoft deals have come way down in scope, says Mega Crit co founder of Casey Yano. The gold rush is over. Little by little, Microsoft's no longer handing out those checks 
to get indie games onto Game Pass or get titles onto Game Pass day one. It's over. If you want to put your games on Game Pass, you're on your own. Microsoft's not helping you. All that stuff dried out, right? And when you think about it, Game Pass is not appealing without some type of check. Without some type of upfront money that at least covers the cost of development. At least that. Just cover the cost of development. And then let everything else, you know, add on top of that. But not even that. Mm -mm, you know, this all spells things just... It's just amazing how so many people knew that this was not going to work out. A combination of saying you don't need a console, your console selling low, and you're giving away games. Well, not giving away, but you pull all these games that normally require some type of, you know, purchase transaction at $70, $60, full, you know, full purchase price. But you think $15 a month is going to cover all that. We knew all this stuff wasn't going to work. We knew this was a stupid strategy. And Microsoft's own stupid strategy has led them to this. Forced to be in third party. Just like most of us has predicted, right? But one more nonsense in fanboy news. So there's this Hail Mary throw that everybody's trying to do, right? Like this, or not everybody, but Xbox guys. Their final shot to try to win the game, even though the score is like 92 to 3. Why are you doing Hail Mary plays? Like the game's over. It's like 10 seconds to the game and the score is 93 to 3, bro. What is wrong with you? Like, but they're still trying to do it to the last fight. Well, anyway, breaking news, right? There's this rumor about Xbox, next box is like a PC box, but it's still an Xbox. But because it's a PC box, while still an Xbox, you could download the Steam client and Epic Game Store client and play the PC version of Steam and the PC version of Epic, even though it's not a PC because it's still an Xbox, but somehow does everything as a PC while still being an Xbox. So yeah, that's how it is. And because it's an Xbox, that's really a PC, but still an Xbox, you could download Steam and get everything Steam, which means you're gonna get PlayStation games just like PC, but it's not PC because it's an Xbox that plays PlayStation games. You, you get it, right? That's apparently the next future of console. Like, unbelievable. Like, the shit these guys are doing is just nuts. Like, listen, that, that, I, you know what? It's not even a PlayStation. Like, you PlayStation fans, Nintendo fans, even some of the PC fans, we all knew that there was a lot of nutcases in the Xbox community. We all knew this. What I'm talking about is you Xbox guys that refuse to believe it. You see it now, right? You're all seeing the nonsense now, and I know you are, because a lot of views left my timeline. You're not on my Twitter timeline talking shit no more. You're def my DMs definitely cleared up. I used to get shit all the time. Now, barely anything. You're not there no more, because y'all see the bullshit. Anyway, homeboy here says, Microsoft has been working. He shows an image of uh, Teams meeting. Gabe Newell's there. Um, Jeff Keighley's there and all that, and he uses that image to say... Microsoft has been working on this for a while now. Breaking news, Steam rumor alert. Microsoft has been working on this for a while now with Valve. Wouldn't be surprised if there is an upcoming announcement in a new partnership between Microsoft and Valve to launch the Steam platform on Xbox Series X and Series S devices, right? This is all about, this ain't really about playing Steam. They want to say they can now play all the games in PlayStation, you know, PlayStation games that go to Steam. Now they can play on the Xbox and every future game. That's what this is all about. This is like, this is a this is redefining Copium. This is this is a whole new level. Xbox, that word is your exclusive now. Hopium and Copium, you own that. Cause the shit y'all do is crazy. Jeff Keighley comes out, said how irresponsible. This was from a COVID Zoom call with fans in 2020, where Game and Phil were answering fans' questions for the public. This was a Zoom call like around four years ago. He made this whole shit up. Yo, I'm sorry, Xbox community, but you by far got the worst content creators now. You got great ones, but you also got the most extreme lie to your face. And I'm going to tell you why. It's because you allowed it to happen. You never put these liars in check. Never. They literally spat in your face and told you anything and you <laughs> slurped that shit up. And now they're out there doing whatever the fuck they want. And it's your community's name attached to that shit. So fucking hilarious. My God, the community's abysmal. But anyway, let's talk about this right here. So we got Dustin Legary, right? You could tell my man's wore out. Anyway, I don't 
you know what? Let's hear him out. And then I'm going to make my points at the end. But anyway, you see the red bar because it's already pretty much over. He's In this video, he covered Phil Spencer's um, Polygon interview. And pretty much now, finally, most people are starting to see the light. And it's just blows, it just blows my mind how blind some of you guys. Like, yo, Ash and Luca, shout out to my sister from another mister. She asked a simple question saying, are people becoming dumber? And I said absolutely absolutely fucking lutely it takes so much for people to actually like learn shit like literally like literally this like literally people this age you cannot teach them how to add numbers you have to give them the answer after in order for them to learn like it's like like you can't tell them hey one plus one equals two therefore what's one plus two uh, 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 uh. It's three. Oh yeah, it's three. Like they they learn after the answers already. Like it's 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 insane. Like for example, this. I'm sorry, but but these people, right? You look at a kitchen, right? You're in the kitchen, and you see a frying pan just overfilled with oil, and the flame and the flame is like the stove is on with the flame at max. So too much oil. Flame high. We all, I think right now we all know like, yo, this, this is crazy. Like, yo, you got too much oil on the frames of full on blast. You're going to cause a fire. These guys can't see that. They will notice the fire after the house is on fire, after the kitchen is on fire. That's when they'll be like, oh shit, started a fire when it's already there. That's what it takes. They can't like put obvious information and see, man, this is some obvious shit. This is what's going to happen. That's why guys like me and you got King Thrash and other people saying, hey, Xbox One third party. Because we seen the obvious information. We saw too much oil in the high flame. These guys didn't see it. Even with the frying pan on fire, they still couldn't see it. They couldn't still see the pan on fire. Just fire not spreading and getting worse. They have to wait till the actual kitchen is burning, like the whole kitchen. And now they're like, oh, shit, the house could be on fire. Well, you fucking think you think now like you, you, you couldn't see him from the moment of looking at the frying pan, way too much oil and the heat all the way up high. You couldn't see it at that moment. It took you to this point. Anyway, let, let's hear. Let's hear with our good friend, Dustin. Long story short, he's going to get into it a little bit more more in the the next interview but this one is is strictly focused on the exclusivity angle and my read on this whole situation is uh, get ready for xbox games to be on as many platforms as possible in the near future obviously he said indiana jones and starfield won't be that so that's the now what's today's date march 28th two days ago i think you made this video um you figured that out now like now, you honestly could not figure out that the day Microsoft had that podcast and they put and they said, hey, we're making four games. Right. That didn't help you. When you realize one of those games, Sea of Thieves. Or I even go before that. When Nintendo had their direct and the direct had Microsoft as a partner. You didn't realize more games was coming. When they announced the date of Sea of Thieves was April. And you logically had to be like, wait a minute, a game like that, you need at least a year to port, maybe even more. That means these guys started porting this game like March 2023 before even the ABK deal. You That didn't help you know at that point that more games are coming. None of that. The frying pan, Destin, the frying pan's full of oil. And the heat's blasting all high. No, no fire. It's it's perfectly fine. You don't see the hazard. It blows my mind about it's just it's insane. Like I can't I, I don't know what to do or say to this community. It's just I it, it's it's sunk so low that it is beyond me. Help me out here. What does a partial exclusive strategy do for an Xbox console? If the console couldn't sell with nothing, with all the exclusives Microsoft owned, 
then what is the future sales of the console going to do with a partial list of exclusives? If, if people thought that it was only going to be a partial list of games on the PlayStation, that doesn't make sense. The partial strategy makes no sense at all. Right off the cuff, four games, right off the cuff. Oh, but it's BT, but, but no, it's four Xbox games right off the cuff. What sense is to pull four games and then just stop? Or on a case by case basis, like what, how does that, how does that help a console strategy with partial exclusives? It's because the strategy is stupid. Microsoft's not thinking that. No one's thinking that. That's copium. That is absolute copium. You're holding on to something and it doesn't even make sense. There's no logical thing behind it. The only logic is, oh snap, Microsoft already has four games ready. And one of them has been in development for over a year. Yeah, that's it. There's no reason to stop it. There's no reason to think it's only be a partial list. It's absolutely insane. Very surprised if he went back on his word this year, but he has proven to be very tricky with how he Let says Let me back up on that one. Word this year, but he has... He's talking about Indiana Jones, Jones Starfield. Starfield won't be that. I would be very surprised if he went back. Well, that's pay attention, Destin. Destin, come on, buddy. Words matter. If you're going to talk about it. He said the first four are not Indiana Jones and Starfield. Go back to the podcast. When he says A, because at the time he didn't announce what the games were. He says four games are coming. And people ask, is it Starfield and the or he no, he just outright said, you know, the first four. It's not Starfield and Indiana Jones, which he's right. The first four is not Starfield and Indiana Jones. But he didn't say those games never come into PlayStation. Like, just stop it. Just just stop. The whole slate. They're done. There's no other way to do it. And here's the thing, Dustin. I want you to do this. I want you to do this. Now that we've seen. Let me help you out. I want you. I want you. Again, we're going to focus on CFTs real quick. Do this for me, Dustin. We know CFTs comes out in April. They need at least a year to start working it, right? So at least March. They had a, of 2023. So they had to at least start the port process at least a year to put on PlayStation Nintendo, right? Okay. That means they started a conversation with Sony, getting the dev kits, talking whatever before March. So let's say starting January 2023 to March 2023, everything started beginning. This is this this if this doesn't wake you up, then nothing will. Uh, then I don't know. I, I I just don't know what else to do for any of you. There's nothing much else I can do, right? There's only so much I can help you out with. But the calendar, it's important. January to March 2023, they're porting CFDs to PlayStation, right? When did Redfall launch? Redfall launch when? Let me, let me put the date. Redfall. Let me put the Redfall launch. Redfall. I'm looking at my phone. Redfall launch. Launch. Come on, help me out here. Launch date. Redfall launch May. In May. So, CFDs was well under development. Come on, got to put this together. Redfall launches, and it's a disaster. A few days later, a few days later, Phil Spencer goes on, what is it, uh, the Unlock podcast with Paris and the other guy. His whole apology. I want you to look at that video, Destin. In fact, everybody... Go back, look at that apology video. We all know he went on an IGN podcast, apologized. The where the where the part where he says, "Hey, the console war is over. You can't out console Nintendo." I want you to all look at that. But when you look at that, I want you to have this thought in your head. Phil made the decision to port games on PS5 because while he was right there. On that podcast, you know, at IGN, telling you these guys, he already greenlit the project. Right there!
there when he was talking. Oh my God! Let me, let me, let me. I, I, this, this, this is, this is, this is, this is just, just some fanatical stuff. Like I, I, like let, let me help you out here. Let me, let me do this for you. Like, first, let, I don't even want to finish Dustin because that it, just we his word on. this year. Yeah, it's alright. Let he, me, let me do this. Let me, let me look at this. Let me look at this. I want to show you guys something. Uh, where is that? Phil Spencer. I'm gonna put that. I'm gonna look it up for you, right, guys, right now. So that way, because I don't think you understand. Phil Spencer. Phil Spencer. Can't out counsel. Can't out counsel Sony. Can't out counsel Sony. Let me look for that. I'm gonna get that video. Let me get that. Let me get that. Let me get that thing. Uh, where's he at? Where's he at? Where's he at? Where's that? Where's that interview? Because this is this is insane. This is insane. thing. Where, where was it at? Holy shit! There's a lot of goddamn. Uh, what you would call it? Uh, content creators. Where you at? Is it? Come on, come on, buddy! Wow, hold on, I'm gonna get this because I'm gonna show you IGN Phil Spencer. Let me look for this Phil Spencer interview. There we go. There we go. Oh, okay, okay. Because I want y'all to let's see where you at. No, that ain't it. What the hell? Um, where we go, Phil Spencer. I'm like, let's see, Phil Spencer. Interview of IGN Phil Spencer Redfall. Holy cow! I gotta do this for you. We, cause I don't think you guys understand where we at. Come on, buddy. Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? <laughs> what kind of? Fun? Oh yeah, here we go. Is it? Okay, here we go. We'll do this right here. Boom. This is it right here. Do you know the U.S. solar companies? Right oh, commercials. All right, but let me put this in here. Look at this. We're going to do it right here. So this you can meet right players here. on any screen. People play with their friends regardless of what other screen they're on. And the console is the... Maybe put too much onto the PC side. Do you think that the console is still getting the console? Remember, this is his interview. This was the whole apology tour. Now, this is what I want you to do. Because I'm going to show a sip it. Go back to this video. Watch it yourself. All right? But, as this interview is happening, that we see right now, this right here is happening. Sea of Thieves is being ported to PlayStation. He knows it. We didn't know this was happening. Hell, by the time this interview happened... The FTC trial of Activision Blizzard didn't even begin yet. It didn't begin for like another month, another six weeks, you know, because this was May. I think the trials began in June. So, this day, he knew, knew that he greenlit a bunch of games to go on PlayStation. Nobody had an idea. Now, listen to this guy. Listen, I want you to now listen to Phil Spencer now that we know he already had games in the works for PS5. Look at him that way. Because at the time when we first saw this, we had no idea. Nobody had any idea that actual games would be imported. We didn't know Hi-Fi Rush was being imported. Hell, Hi-Fi Rush literally came out two months before that. But yet, point in Hi-Fi Rush, see your thesis is in there. All those games are being worked on. He's working on them, all of them. And we had no idea. But now that we know, in hindsight, look at, let's hear him now. But with us now knowing he knew because he already started doing it. Now let's listen. Now let's listen to those contexts and the words with him already making the decision. Yes, this is done. Love that it deserves, whether it be the homepage update, achievements, of course, looking forward and using the power of this next gen. Do you think you guys have lost that focus or is it still there? And can we see more love on that side? Well, we'll definitely continue to focus on on making our console experience as, as great as it can be. I like the the homepage refresh and some stuff. I will say this might be disruptive as well. Um, we have a different vision. You know, Paris talked about this. It's play the games you want with the people you want anywhere you want. We want Xbox to be something that people who buy our console can feel like they're a member of, obviously, who are playing on PC, who are playing on cloud, that they feel like, feel like they're full members um, of our ecosystem. Game Pass players can play 
um, on many different devices, and, and we remain fully committed to that. Um, we're not in the business of out-consoling Sony or out-consoling Nintendo. Um, there isn't really a great solution or win for us. And I know that will upset a ton of people, but it's just the truth of the matter is that when you're third place in the console marketplace and the top two players are as strong as they are and have, um, in certain cases, very very dis discreet focus on doing deals and other things that will um, that kind of make being Xbox hard for us as a team that's on us, not on anybody else. Our vision is that everybody who's on console has to feel like they have a great experience and they're a first class citizen. They've invested a ton in our platform, but we are not in a position and I, I see it out there. I see commentary that if you just build great games, everything would turn around. It's just, not true that if we go off and build great games, all of a sudden you're going to see console share shift in some dramatic way. We lost the worst generation to lose in the Xbox One generation where everybody built their digital library of games. Um, so when you go and you're building on Xbox, we want our Xbox community to feel awesome. But this idea that if we just focused more on great games on our console, that somehow we're going to win the console race, I think doesn't really lay into the reality of most people, like 90% of the people every year who walk into a retailer to buy a console are already a member of one of the three ecosystems. And their digital library is there. This is the first generation where the big games that they're playing um, were games that were available last gen when you think about Fortnite and Roblox and Minecraft. Like the continuity from generation to generation is so strong. I see a lot of pundits out there that kind of want to go back to the time where we all had cartridges and discs and every new generation was a clean slate and you could switch the whole console share. That's just not the world that we are in today. There is no world where Starfield's an 11 out of 10 and people start selling their PS5s. That's not going to happen. Um, so what we have to do, and we have this unique vision because we see what creators want to do. Creators want to build games that can meet players on any screen. People play with their friends regardless of what other screen they're on. And the console is the core of the Xbox brand. There's no doubt. So, so like we will stay focused on making sure that console experience is awesome. But I know some people want to hold us up of just being a better green version of what the blue guys do. Um, and I'm just going to say, like, there's not a win for Xbox in staying in the wake of somebody else. We have to go off and do our own thing with Game Pass, with the stuff we do with xCloud, and the way we build our games. Sorry. But notice he didn't say we're currently porting games as I speak right now. <laughs> oh! Oh my God, absolute, absolute insanity, absolute insanity, right? And the fact that people are noticing is blowing my mind, but I'm gonna say this, right? To finish off this video, someone please explain to me what the industry changing means. What's changing? Industry, industry, everything. For example, what's EA? What's EA doing different? Let's start with them. Anybody, can somebody give me an update? Something EA is doing something different? Ubisoft. Capcom, Sega, CD Projekt Red, take two. Like, I, I, I don't know what's Konami, Bandai Namco, anybody, Bueller, like this industry, what, what's happening across the industry, right? The reality is people are full of shit using fake code words. All right. The industry is not dramatically changing. Microsoft is the only one that's dramatically changing. Nintendo ain't changing. Right. The reality is this. The change of the industry happened during the PS3 360 era. That was an industry shift. That generation began the industry shift. And the shift was the business practice of providing games to the market leading console which will happen during the ps2 era the ps1 era you know super nintendo you know during those days where because of the architecture and the challenge behind multi-platform they just supported 
um, the market leading console. Some companies did multipath, but for the most part, if you were the market leading console, you would get all the support. 360 PS3 changed that, you know, with the dynamics. So the market shifted with third party now normalizing third party practices, putting games everywhere. And that's kept going and going to where in order to get an exclusive from third party, it had to come at a cost with, you know, third party deals, marketing rights, things like that. That was the shift. That's it. Now we're not going through an industry shift because EA is doing EA things. Sure, they may add additional stuff, you know, like with, you know, reoccurring revenue, with gas, but the industry, third party industry always try to find ways to make money, right? Remember the $10 project where if you buy a used game, you had to pay $10 to play the multiplayer component because the, the card, the scratch off card, if you bought the game new, you had to enter the code to access the multiplayer and this was to mitigate or minimize the loss of sales because of used games. Remember that? So third party industry always try to come up with some weird shit, right? But in the end, nothing's really changing now. Third party's doing third party things. So what is this whole nonsense about all oh, the industry changing? No, Microsoft is changing. But it's code word for we don't want to admit that Microsoft failed. So we're just going to redefine it as industry changing and we're and they're just going to keep talking as if Sony is going to do the same exact thing. They're just going to keep convincing themselves. They're just going to keep, you know, it's just a, it's just a coping mechanism where they're just going to discuss among each other. So that way they don't say the quiet part out loud. They don't want to say, listen, Microsoft failed. The Xbox man overall was a failure. This is why Microsoft's doing it because Xbox just failed. And then that's it. Nope. It's the industry's changing. And you're going to see Sony's going to do it too because this generally doesn't work. It wasn't the fact that Microsoft failed. No, no, Microsoft's fine. They just, they're just the first ones to realize this whole strategy just doesn't work. That's, they just, you'll see, Sony's going to eventually see it. Nintendo's going to eventually see it. Everyone's going to eventually see it. Just Microsoft's just the first one to notice. No, Microsoft failed. Xbox failed. It failed. No one's buying that shit, right? And then what made things worse because of Game Pass, the few people that would buy games didn't. So left even less people to buy full wheel to games. It's just a bad product. It was just bad, right? Microsoft had a stupid strategy. Like literally make commercials saying no console required while making a console. Stupid. The marketing was stupid. The message was stupid. The two-tier console of Series X, Series S, stupid. Stupid, 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 stupid. Everything they did was stupid. Everything. Series S was stupid. The Series X was stupid. Game Pass is stupid. The commercials were just stupid. It was just stupid. This whole this whole thing was just a stupid-ass idea. And it bit them in the face. It failed, right? Trying to take whole $70 games and thinking people pay 15 bucks a month. Not even that. Because a lot of games didn't even do that. Some people upgraded two, three years worth of Xbox Live Gold for a dollar. And for three years, they paid nothing while getting every game. Yeah, it was just stupid. Microsoft strategy was just dumb. Of course, they're going to need PlayStation. They have to make up so much back. And they're going after the platforms that already has the largest fan base in console gaming. Because they don't barely got anything. But instead of Xbox influencers, podcasts, all that stuff, just seeing the goddamn... Excuse my language. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Instead of just seeing... The obvious and just admit like, yo, Xbox was just stupid. They failed and just leave it at that. It ain't industries changing or I'm nervous for it. No, your console's changing because it's going from a first party platform provider to just a company that makes games and they're just going to stick with making consoles. If you want to keep buying Xbox console, buy it. But PlayStation gamers will be playing Xbox games if they want to. Nintendo gamers will be playing Xbox games if they want to. That's it. If you want to buy the Xbox console and all you get is Xbox games, that's your choice. Xbox games, third party, you're good. PlayStation gamers will get Xbox games, but they also have PlayStation games and third party games. Nintendo will get Xbox games and they got the Nintendo games and third party games. Xbox games just get Xbox games. If that's, if that's, you know, I mean, Game Pass, if Game Pass is that more important to you, then cool. I mean, that as long as you get that, right? And that's all that matters. No shame in that. But to delude yourself into thinking this is an industry shift. No, Microsoft failed at 
at the Xbox project to make Xbox a definitive brand with market share and people going out there being excited about a console and just selling like 20, 15 to 20 million per year. No, no, sir. No, sir. No one was buying that nonsense. It's just a failed project. So just deal with it and accept it and stop with this bullshit about industry shift nonsense. Stop coping and thinking Xbox gonna be a PC with Steam. Oh, you just you guys are just doing some Hail Mary bullshit. Like, just stop, man. Stop making shit up. Y'all aren't y'all tired of making shit up for three years just to see it fall flat on your face? That's all y'all did for three years. Y'all made up shit about Xbox success, Game Pass success, little Timmy's gonna buy Series S, all this stuff stupid shit year after year aren't you sick of just lying and just making shit up now you want to make up a new bullshit man yeah you know yeah pfft, stop all right anyway you let me know what you think over this bullshit all this nonsense this is your only friend is youtube streets porter rock 77 and i'll come back with another video and of course next week 60 frames no lag podcast well i'll get well i'll round up the crew and i'll see if i could you know get another guest and stuff like that check out the last podcast gas from game on delhi was on it fantastic show you know what i'm saying him and extreme did a little you know they got in the ring and doing their thing that's what the podcast is all about 60 frames no lag see you guys later man you guys take care peace oh Grand opening, grand closing.